everyone, my name is Giovanna Proença and today we're going to talk about sign-up form of the Odin project. Now it's the part of HTML and CSS Advanced. So basically in this project we're going to build a sign-up form just like this and you're going to learn more about advanced selectors, positioning things in your page, form basics, form validators, how to use GitHub and also Sublime Merge. So take a look at this exercise because you're going to enjoy a lot. Let's start. So now let's start creating our repository on GitHub. So here I'm going to call Odin sign up, for example, the readme file and here create repository. All right, then here that we are inside, we click on code, we copy here and we open up our VS code. All right, I'm inside repos and here I'm going to do git clone and I'm going to paste. All right. Then the first thing I'm going to do here in the Odin sign up, I'm going to create, I'm going to do cd odin dash sign up and I'm going to be, I'm going to create a new file called touchindex.html. All right. I will also going to create a folder called images. Okay. And I think this is it. All right. In the future, I will also create here a main.js for the verification we're going to do in the inputs. All right. And the touch style.css. Okay. So here we have all the files we're going to work with. All right. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to put the images and the, the font family that we're going to here. You're going to download the font family and the Odin logo and the image you want to work with and you're going to put in your folder, okay? And before this, I will also set up here my Sublime Merge. So I'm going to use Sublime Merge to work with our projects, okay? So here, if I go to Repos and I select here the sign up, okay? Now I have here, again, remember that the Sublime Merge, like I mentioned in the previous videos, basically here we can stage all the changes we do in the files and we can put in our local repo. And then finally we can send to GitHub. Okay, so this is really good. I'm going to stage all and I'm going to put here create files, main files. So while I'm going to start adding things here in our local repo to keep it track. And here we have the branch of the, we have the history of everything we did. Okay. So I'm going to fix here my VS code with the images and the phone family and we'll be right back. So now that I have all the files in here, okay, inside my images, I have the images that we're going to work with. All right. I also have in here the font family we're going to work. So let's try start creating the file. Okay. And then basically what is the goal? We're going to do a project, something similar to this. Okay. We have to do something similar to this, this image in here, here, this message with this form. Okay. So let's start here. I'm going to create the dog type HTML. HTML, the HTML tag in here and here we need the head. So here in our head, I'm going to have a title and I'm going to call sign up form. And one thing that is good to remember, here's our project. Now it's calling index.html, but once I re refresh, here's going to appear sign up form. Okay. Then I'm going to create a link to our style.css. So rel equals to style sheet and href equals to style.css. I will also make a link with our JavaScript, so it's script src for source main.js. Okay. And I think this is it. Later on, we can work with more things. And here I'm going to make the body. Okay. So this is pretty much what we have. Just to check if it's working, I'm going to use an h1 saying hi. Okay. And if I refresh, now we have this h1 saying hi. All right, then now I'm going to stage all and I'm going to save here is starting creating links between files. 
All right, something like this, just to keep track. Now, what are we gonna do? We're gonna start working with getting the this Norse bold as the the font family for everything. Okay, so I'm gonna change this font family to everything. If you take a look at this uh, lecture, more text styles that we see in, before we're doing this project, we have this download fonts. So how can we use this download fonts? We're gonna do something similar to this. Okay, to set up the things that we wanted to. So here in our CSS, I'm gonna copy the name of the font family here. Actually, I'm gonna change one thing. I'm gonna create a folder in the sign up and I'm gonna call fonts and I'm gonna put the font family inside of fonts. Let me see if I can change it right now. And then I'm gonna change here fonts and I'm gonna put the name of the font, nors-bold.otf. And here I'm gonna call nors bold, okay? Nors bold, all right. Let me just fix here the font and I'll be right back. So I change here the, the Norse bold is inside the fonts. And how can we see if it's working? Right now we see here high this way, but if we res if we store here changing the font family to Norse bold and we refresh, now we can see that change the style. All right, so, so far it's working. Then what are we gonna do? If we take a look, so here we're gonna use uh, this font for the logo session. So we're gonna use this logo in here, in the logo session to say Odin, okay? And we basically have to split our screen into two. So one part will have the image and the other part we have everything we we're gonna work with. So let's just start splitting our, our project into two, okay? So in here, I'm gonna remove this. So we're gonna have a div and here I'm gonna give a class uh, image, image logo. Actually, I'm going to call left and right, okay? And here I want to say hi right now, hi. And the other div, I'm going to give a class equals to right. And control Z, here I want to say H1 hello. Okay, so if I refresh now our project, we have here hi and hello, okay? but we should put all of them in different parts. So one in the left and another one in the right. Okay, so I'm gonna use here. I'm gonna put all of this inside of a main div. And this is I'm gonna call main, for example. And I'm gonna put these two divs inside of this main. We can also work with the body, that's fine, okay? But I wanna split into multiple pieces. And in here, I'm gonna create this dot main. And what am I gonna do? I'm gonna give a display flex, justify content, uh, I'm gonna give a flex direction of a row, okay? So if we take a look in here, now they are in a row, okay? And I wanna give a width of 100 VH to tell that I wanna use 100% of the screen in here, okay? How can we see if it's working? If I put in here justify content center, for example, they're gonna be in the center in here, great. And, sorry, I'm not gonna use Justify Content Center in here. How can we check if it's working? We can work with the left, left in here, and I can say Display Flex, Justify Content Center, and I can do the same for the right. So let's see how it looks like. And we can take a look at what is going on. Let me see, and I wanna give a width of 5VH. All right, so here we can see that we have two screens, right? One in the left and one in the right. So basically, we're gonna start working in here with the part of the image. So now for the image, we're going to split this into two. Okay, I don't wanna have this way anymore, okay? I'm gonna work with the right later. So in here, I'm gonna fix this width. I'm, I'm done, wanna use this width right now. And here I'm gonna have the display flex and the justify content. Actually, just the, actually I'm not gonna use any of those, okay? <laughs> so now we're gonna work with background. So we can use the background image, okay, property, and we can set which image we wanna work with. So basically here, background image, we can say URL, and now we say the path 
path to access this background image. So how can we do this? Here we're going to do dot forward slash and here already appears some suggestion images and then this image that we got. Okay, so if I refresh, it won't look like we're expecting. And why is that? Because we need to make the specific width that we want. I'm gonna use 35 width uh, percent of the page. And we need to specify the height. So we wanna get all the height in here. So to work with the height, I'm gonna change in here, 100% HVH. And like we can see in here, it already give 100%. And now the width in, of the left, I want to use 35VW. And why it's good to use VW and VH? Because it's going to be responsive. Okay, so now we can see this way. One other thing, I want to remove the margin. So I'm going to use in here body and I'm going to set margin zero and padding zero. I don't want this to uh, influence in our project and like now we don't have any margin anymore and besides that i want to use these other properties here the background repeat no repeat and the background size to cover so this way even if we change the this the, the size of the screen it won't bug our code okay so let's see if change something in here if i refresh now it's sets like to cover it's not so it doesn't have a zoom like we were seeing before and it's pretty similar to what we have right i'm not gonna work right now with uh, creating this part of the image the text and so on so i'm gonna let this for later now let's work with this part here of the form okay so in here i'm just gonna do the following in here i'm gonna change the color to white so we can see the high so far here we can see hi, okay. And I'm gonna use the background, uh, the font family like we saw. So font family, the one that we just made in the top. So Norse bold. And here I'm gonna say sans serif, for example. Okay, I'm gonna remove this from here because we just wanna have this font family in this part of the code. So let's take a look if I refresh. Now only in here. Actually, it won't work in here. I'm gonna remove this font family right now and later on we work with the font family. Okay, so if I refresh, anything is it's happening. Okay, now let's work with the right side. Let's create the text in here with everything we need. So first, in the left side, I'm gonna have this paragraph. Let me see if they, they tell us to use something different. So let's use this paragraph create a paragraph here, an H2 for example, and then we create this box in the middle. I'm gonna split here into three divs, okay? This one, this one, and the last one. So I'm gonna go here to index.html, and in the right, I'm gonna have three divs. Class equals to first, all right. Now I'm gonna close, great. Then I'm gonna have a div called second, great and a div called third all right and what are we gonna have here i'm gonna say hi hello and here i'm gonna say world so we can take a look how it looks like so far okay so if i refresh now we have hi hello and world and i want to put them in a column so i'm gonna put using here in the right I'm gonna remove the justify content. I'm gonna put a flex direction column. And now if I refresh, we're gonna see them in a column. Okay, now we're gonna set the width. So basically here we know that this part is a little bit greater. This is smaller and this is large again. So I'm gonna use the view height, okay? So in here, I'm gonna create the first. And here I'm gonna give a height of uh, 40 VH for example then I'm gonna have a second with a height of 30 VH oops VH and I'm gonna have the third with the what it has left so basically 30 VH as well oops height of 30 VH so let's see if I refresh now they are split into these spaces, okay? And it's more about what I believe it is. Or we can split into 33, 33, 33 if we wanted to. That's fine, okay? 
you can play around the way you prefer. All right, now let's start working with the paragraph here in this first part. This is not a real online service, blah, blah, blah. So inside of this, I want to make, actually, we can play around pretending that we have one div here that is empty, another div in here, this big div, this div, and this smaller div in here. We can kind of play around with them if we wanted to. But let's do the way that we're doing right now. First, let's create this h1 in here. So first, actually, I'm going to first commit all the changes. All right, so working with the left part initially okay um, I'm gonna commit now let's work with the first part so here we what we want to do in this first I want to display an h2 I'm gonna use h2 and we want to display this message so I'm gonna write it down this message here and I will be right back so I put everything here under h2 and I use br to split the here into different lines okay and I use two brs in here to split to create an, a line between the text and the second part, all right? And as a result, like we can see here, we have this. I think it's too big, so we can change to H3, for example, okay? Now let's see what is the change, all right? Let's compare, I think it's a little bit better. And we need to use in here, we make it, it italic, so how can we do this? We can use a tag in here around now, that is the EM, okay, oops. EM and we put this in between EM and in you know as well so here you put EM and we put in here all right and if I refresh if I refresh in here we have now this way okay one thing that is important we can also put a background color here do you see it's a kind of gray so I'm gonna give a background color to our right side so i'm gonna put a here background color not gray but like f a f a f a let's see how it looks like i think it will be too white okay here it looks nice all right and this is good because we can see that it's not a hundred percent width so here we're gonna set not a hundred percent but in the left we're saying 35 vh so here we're gonna set the 100 minus 35 that will be 65 vw actually so here we want to get the whole width all right like we can see in here now let's put this in the middle right like in this part in here so what are we going to do we're going to use the display in the first we're going to use display flex and i want to use a justify content center because i want to put all of this in the center okay like we see in here but now i want to put in the flex end i want to put more down in here so let's see if i put in here align items flex and and i refresh it will be more closer to our page i think this the in the middle is not the best idea right we can even use here h2 instead of h1 i think now it's too small so here h2 instead of h1 let's see it's looking a little bit more similar to what we have it's because we don't have the the font family right and we can st instead of using flex justify content center let's use flex start and we can work with margin so here flex start let's see and we can work a little bit with margin so margin here margin left we can give like 40%. I don't know, let's see how it looks like. 40% is too much, I'm gonna use 20%. And let's see, 20%, it's too much. Probably five, it will be good enough. Five, all right. It look, looks like more what we have. And in the bottom, I'm gonna put a margin bottom of five pixels as well. So let's see, it looks a little bit better. All right, now let's take a look. Now we can do this box in here, right? This box for let's do this. Uh, so to do this, we're gonna work with the second and right now I'm also gonna have in here a background color of white because I want to show you the big difference. If I scroll 
if I refresh, now we can see here the background color white. Okay, and we can use a bug shadow later, but right now let's start creating the let's do this and the forms. So basically in here we're gonna split, we're gonna have the let's do this in here. H3, I don't know, saying let's do this. Okay, with everything in lowercase. And now we're gonna split into left and right in the form as well, okay? So one thing that is important, we're gonna use form in here. So if you take a look in form, we need to say the form action, like we can see here. And we're gonna leave everything empty right now, okay? The method, and we have the inputs inside. And to manipulate the inputs, we can use div. So we're gonna have one div to put everything in the left and another div to put everything in the right, okay? So what are we gonna do? We're gonna have a form, action, the action, I'm gonna leave it empty, and the method we can say get, okay? Then in here, after our form, we have, I'm gonna do the left and the right form. So div class equals to left form, and I'm gonna have the div class equals to right form. Actually here we can just say inner, we can call like form divs if we want, because they're gonna have the same properties. So form divs, okay. And the form here, I'm gonna give a class of form main div, for example. And how can we separate everything in here? I'm gonna put, I'm gonna create in here form main div. I'm gonna display flex. I'm gonna use a flex direction column and I want, let's take a look. So if I put in here, okay, not a column. Actually, it's important to put something inside, right? So we can take a look what is going on in our div. So I'm gonna say hi, hello. And if I refresh, they are in a here, but I wanna put them in a row actually. So here I'm gonna change to row, okay? So now they're split into two rows. And now we're gonna work with the forms. So for example here, form creating, if you remember for form basics lecture of owning project, we can use a label to create here this first name, all right, last name, email, phone number, password, confirm password. And the input will be the box that we're seeing here. Okay, so we're gonna use this structure. So I'm gonna copy and paste. And basically, I wanna work with different divs, okay? So here, for example, in this form div, I'm gonna have one div, class equals to form div only, and I'm gonna paste the label and the input, okay? So the first, the first input we have in here, if we take a look, is the first name, okay? So here, first name is already this way, and the ID will be first name. And also, if you take a look in here, we can use a placeholder. In this case, they are not expecting us to have a placeholder, okay? And we, name, we need the name attribute when we're working with forms. So here, we're gonna use this name attribute, and it's always going to use something descriptive, okay? So here, I'm gonna say first name, all right? So if I refresh, we're gonna see here this part, okay? We don't have the colon, so I'm gonna remove. And later on, we're gonna work with this div to make everything looks the same, okay? So now I'm gonna create the email and password because right now we're creating the left part. So I'm gonna create here another one for email and another one for password. So here I'm gonna change for email, email. Here the type, we can use type email, so it will be expecting us to receive an email. The first name, I'm gonna ch the ID, I'm gonna change to email, and the name as well to email, okay? And in here, we're gonna do the same for password. All right, so password, password. Here we can have a type password, okay? And we have here pass the name password as well. And here I'm gonna change to password. Later on, we're gonna work with create, making them the validation for them. Okay, but right now let's just focus on the styling. And so this is the left part. Now let's work with the right part. So it will be pretty much the same, but we're gonna have last name, number, and confirm password. So I'll be changing in here and I will be right back.
Okay, so we have all of this in here. And one thing that is important that you can see is that if you take a look in the form basics, we have a special type for phone number. Okay, so I just use this in here, tell, all right. And now if we take a look, we have the four, the six inputs that we're gonna work with, all right? Right now, I just wanna make a quick fix. That's something about I said in the, in the beginning. We're gonna use this font family nurse bold in all of the projects. So here, we're gonna change the font family in body to this font family that we just downloaded, okay? And if we refresh, uh, it, took, it seems much easier, much uh, similar to our project. And I'm gonna change here to a different font size because I think it's too much. Okay, now something is going wrong. Here we have this word. Why here word has this? Let me see. Here we have the flex in. Here, what do we have? I'm gonna remove this height so far. Let's see if this fix something. All right, let me change the size of this H. Instead of H2, I'm gonna do an H3. Let's see if this fix something. All right, looks a little bit better. This word, I'm not sure why is in there, but we're gonna fix in a bit. Now let's work with oh, fixing this, this part of the form, okay? So I'm gonna do some changes. Here, the first change, I think the first, it's too big. I'm gonna put here 25, all right? So if I refresh, now it's a little bit better. The form will be here in the middle, and now we can fix here the form using let's work with the divs okay first what is the div we're gonna work with will be this div here form div okay to make all of this form div in the same in a column all right because now we have the label and the input in the same direction so form div here it will be uh, in a display flex and flex direction a column Okay, so let's take a look. If we refresh in here, they look like this way, great. Now let's create a space in between the left and the right part. So here in our form div main, I'm gonna give a margin, let's see, of 10%. I'm not sure. Okay, it's too much. 1%, let's see. And okay, I think it's not so good. What can we do is, instead of using percent, here the first I'm gonna give pixels, and here I'm gonna give pixels as well. So if I refresh in here, it's looking this way. I'm gonna let pixels in, uh, percent in here. All right, but now I wanna work with this. So in this form div, for the form divs actually, I'm gonna use a, here the width will be 80% of the width, okay. And I wanna use uh, Justify Content Center. So let's see how it looks like. Justify Content Center, okay. I'm gonna use here the text, oops. Let's do this here, I wanna change this, let's do this. I wanna give a margin, so here's style. And I wanna give a margin of 10 pixels, for example, let's see. Not for this. Let's see how much does it change. Here actually is just a margin left. Okay, I think I'm changing too much. All right. Now I wanna put this, uh, the first div, the both divs here, the form divs. I want to do a display flex and I want to put the justify content in the flex start. So let's see if I do this in here, nothing changes and the align items. Let me see here. Align items flex start. If I change this in here, okay, nothing is changing. Oh, I don't have this form dips. Dot form dips. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Justify content. One thing is this form dips, we want to do a flex direction of a column. 
right? So if we do this, okay. Flex start, align items, flex start. So let's see. Actually, if I remove this justify content, I think it will fix some things. Okay. I'm gonna try to play around to put this into columns. So now for the input, we're gonna start creating some spaces. So we're gonna create a space here between the divs. All right, so we're gonna use a div form. So in here, I'm gonna give like a margin bottom of 10 pixels, okay. Now we have a little bit more spacing. I also wanna change here the color, all right. Let me see one thing here. It's everything in lower, in uppercase, so I'm gonna change everything to uppercase, but I'm gonna do it later. And we're gonna create this styling for the form, okay. I'm gonna give a width, and also we're gonna change the color for this. So for the input, I'm gonna use here a tag input and I'm gonna give a width of 100 pixels. Let's see how it changes. So if I refresh, the width is too short. If I put 200 pixels, let's see. Now it looks a little bit better, all right? And here, let's change the color of the border. So as we can see in here, basically they're telling us this is the color of the border, okay? So we're gonna change here for border color to this one that we're grabbing from uh, Odin project. Okay, and we can set this like, I'm gonna change to border, one pixel, solid, this for example. I think it will look a little bit better. All right, so it seems similar than we have before. I will also change the height so here the height I'm gonna put like 75 pixels. So 75 is too much. Let me put 30. Let's see here. 30 is too much. 25 is a good number. So here we have 25. Great. Okay. We can have rounded corners so we can put like here border radius of 10 pixels. Let's see how it looks like. I think it will be too much or not. Yes, too much. We can put like five pixels. Okay, better, all right. And now we can start working with this when it's on focus or not. So basically in here we have two variations, all right? One that will be here in red, the confirm password and the password that should be red with these passwords do not match, this message being displayed, okay? And in here, when we are on focus and we are writing, should be blue. So basically the focus here, we're gonna use this focus advanced selector that we saw in the advanced selector lecture. So basically the focus applied to an element that is currently selected by the user either through selecting it with the cursor or using the keyboard. So it, this will be exactly what we're gonna do. So what are we gonna do in here? We're gonna do, how can we use selectors? We're gonna use the verb, the tag input, and we're gonna do uh, here, colon, focus, okay? And what we're gonna do, we're gonna change the border to one pixel, solid, but we're gonna use this blue in here. I'm not sure if they give us the color blue. No, but I'm gonna put in here blue. And let's see what how it looks like. If it's not that pretty, we can change. So here, do you see, when we click, it changed to blue, exactly like we have in here, all right? And the red one, if you take a look at the form validator, we can use this invalid pseudo classes, okay? When the input is invalid, we're gonna have this border, border color red, okay? So let's put in here, input invalid. We're gonna have a border of one pixel, solid and red. Okay, right now I don't think it will look like it needs to be, but in the future we can add this invalid in here. Because basically we have here the invalid input, all right? And we can use some JavaScript to check if it's valid or not, okay? So let's play around. So basically from the lesson, we're gonna add here the word required, okay, required, and like we already saw, we have the invalid. So if we refresh in here, then now it's gonna appear this red thing, all right? When we are, because it's missing something. But we need to add this message, passwords do not match, and we're gonna start with this. Okay, so this passwords do not match, we're gonna create a paragraph in here, beneath the, in here. I'm gonna create a paragraph, and I'm gonna give an ID 
message error actually okay and we're gonna initialize our console.log so in here i'm gonna do document dot add event listener so we're gonna wait our our html to run to start running our our javascript and let's see if it's working so here i'm gonna do a console.log hi okay so if i use here the developer tools we're gonna see that when i refresh it's gonna see that it's appearing hi okay so so far hi is working now we're going to create the logic in here if it's empty if the the passwords do not match we're going to work with this so how can we get these two input fields so basically if we use here console and i put here a password okay if i use document the query selector and i put here the id of this password so it's password here we're gonna get the input okay but we need to get the value of this input and this is exactly what i put in my variable i put g and we need to check if it's it has the same property as our confirm password so we're gonna do the password equals to confirm password okay and in this case they do not match because in one i put g in the other one i put high so basically we need to check if both of them are the same okay so we're gonna first we need to make this these two components so in here i'm gonna do let password and it's gonna be equals to this okay and let confirm password and it will be equals to the same but in here instead of password it will be our confirm password okay we also need to grab our message so here i'm gonna get the paragraph message that will be our error okay and here is a document dot query selector error okay and now we're gonna check if they match so if password it's different than confirm password we're gonna display a message in our error paragraphs we're gonna do error dot inner html equals to uh, passwords do not match okay so let's check if we refresh in here and I say G and I say hi it's because we don't have a button right so let's create this button one thing that I forgot is that the button is outside the div so we need to manipulate some things in our HTML okay so basically in here we're creating this third div right but actually we're gonna have this h3 inside of our form um, yes this h3 inside of our form okay the properties that we have here in second that it's the background color and the height here we're going to put we're going to put actually the div second inside of the form okay so i'm going to put a div second in here okay let me fix the form and let me fix this div and here I'm gonna fix form h3 okay here we have an extra closing div so now our second is fixing in here let's see how much it changed so we have things in here right the third won't be in here the, f the third will be inside of this div div class equals to third okay because we have to put this button in there and we're gonna do some changes because in here we're using this display display flex blah 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 so i will be fixing and i will be right back so here i think some things all right we have the structure we had before i just created an i just removed the class from the form and i created a new div where we have everything under this class forming div this is the only thing i did besides that i put everything in uppercase okay so we look like this so far now let's change the color and the size here because i think it's too big the for the label so here for the label we're gonna work with I'm gonna have a oops label and I'm gonna change the font size to 15 pixels and the color I want to use some color similar to what we're using for the border if it's too 
uh, light we can change. So it's too light. I will change here to 10 pixels. Okay. And here I'm gonna change to another type of gray, like this one, I don't know. Here you can play around. Okay, we can put a little bit better the color. So let's play here a little bit more with the type, the color gray that we want. And it can be stronger, right? So it can be pretty similar to this. Let's see. All right. So now it looks pretty similar to our image. Okay, let's continue working with the button in here because we've we fixed here the we need to see if the password do not match is displaying. So here we're gonna create an account, okay? And actually, in here I'm gonna do the up uh, the way around. So if they are the same, we're gonna display anything, okay? And I wanna start here displaying this error message. Okay, so let's see. Let me refresh in here and it's not displaying this paragraph it's okay let's continue working with the button okay so here in the third we want to have a button here green okay so here we're gonna have the input type actually I'm gonna use a button type equals to submit and the class here I'm gonna say btn um, btn green all right, and what we want to display, create an account. Here we want to say create account. All right, and we're gonna do this now. So let's see, if I refresh, now it's displaying this button. It doesn't look nicer than, than we are expecting. Let me see if our JavaScript continue working. Inspect, we're having an issue with the JavaScript. It's displaying high, this part of the, it's no big deal. And we should be seeing the paragraph. Why we're not seeing the paragraph? So I was playing around in here and I found out what was our issue, okay? So basically the problem is that in this case, the password, they are the same, right? Because both of them are uh, empty. So we need to do an if statement before this, the password, if the password is equal to empty and the confirm password is equal to empty, we're gonna display the error message saying that the passwords do not match, else if, if they are not the same, if they are the same, we're gonna display empty, okay? So if I refresh in here, let me see, passwords do not match, confirm password. Oh, here, double equals right so if i refresh now it's displaying the passwords do not match okay so now let me change here again to the way it was if i refresh okay now let's fix this paragraph here the paragraph error okay i put here already in red but we can change the font size to 10 pixels as well okay and i think it will look nicer 10 pixels it's great okay and that's pretty much what we need. And I'm gonna say margin zero. Okay, I'm not sure if it's gonna change something. Yeah, it changed. I'm gonna put margin one pixel. Okay, perfect. Now it looks brilliant, okay? Pretty similar to what we have in here. Probably we can use a darker red, but I'm, I'm pretty okay with the color that we're using right now. Now let's work with the button, okay? So basically they're telling us that this is the color of the button they are using, okay? And uh, it's similar to the tones found in the background image. So let's use this color of button. So in here, we're gonna use in the index, like we can see, we have here the button btn green. So I'm gonna use here the class dot btn green. And I'm gonna use here background color this one so let's see if it changed something okay it changed we can use the color white because this is the color of the text okay we can give a border uh, of one pixel solid and the color we just copied so in here if I refresh okay I can give a border radius of 10 pixels 
we can see in here and we can increase the height of the bottom right so here height we can put like 50 pixels let's see I think 50 will be too much okay probably not that much if we use 40 and we need to increase the width so here width if I put here 50 pixels let's see okay it's too little <laughs> if I put here a hundred all right too little as well let's use 200 and in here it looks like pretty much what we have right it doesn't need to be that big it can be 175 for example and it's a little bit better okay now we can create a space in between right so we can add a margin to this div third so we can have here a margin of 20 pixels for example and let's see now it looks a little bit better i think we were using 50 right if we take a look in here we were using 50. so here we're gonna use 50. okay and it's pretty much how it is similarly to what we have probably the margin here we can use margin left and the margin top can be a little bit uh, not that big yes so it will be pretty similar to here okay create an account great we can change here the font weight to bolder so it will be bolder here the but the bottom and we can increase the height the size of the button we can put like large let's see too much we can use medium great okay probably not that much let's see what sizes we have it will be small let's see small and that's great okay now let's create this have an account login blah 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 so now we're gonna have a text here beneath the button we can actually put beneath the form here the div class equals to hyperlink for example and in here we're gonna have a text right so it will be a paragraph where we're gonna say already oops already have an account and here the a tag will be logged in so we're gonna have an a href I'm not I'm gonna point to anywhere and I'm gonna say log in okay and if we take a look in here it will display this login but i want to be this login in green okay like we can see here we want this login to be in green so we're gonna work with this the hyperlink class i'm gonna give a margin dot hyperlink class i'm gonna give a margin left of 50 pixels so it's the same alignment as the bottom the margin top will be 25 pixels let's see better the text can be a little bit smaller i'm not sure and it can be a green the login the a tag should be a green button so here we're gonna say color and we're gonna use the same color here the a tag remember is the tag that we use for harper links so here let's see if we refresh now it's green right and here we don't have the line in here in the bottom the underline so we're going to remove this underline here by saying i believe it's decorator text decoration and i'm going to say none if we refresh no text decoration and we can put this in a strong font family so font weight bold right let's see it's pretty similar to what we have in here all right so this part is kind of complete if you take a look at they are pretty similar to each other now we can work with the part of the image okay so now let's work with the part of the image so actually before we move on with the color let's work with the box shadow that i mentioned so here we're going to create this this idea here of having kind of like a, a shadow in the page okay so we're going to work with this in here and to do this we're going to use this box shadow property 
Okay, I'm gonna bring this box shadow here. I'm gonna use this same color, probably lighter and not so so big the height. Okay, so we have the box shadow in the second div, that is the one that is in white. So here I'm gonna add a box shadow. Let's see how it looks like. So if I refresh, we have a huge box shadow, right? So we don't want that dark and not that big. So we can have like, we can decrease here to two and five. And in here, I'm gonna use the same color as we are using for the input. But before we change, let me try it out with this one. So if we decrease a little bit, it looks a little bit better. Okay. And now if I change this color to this one, let's see. It looks a little bit better, right? Let me see in here. Yes. Great. Now we're going to do the same for the button. Okay. So we can copy this box shadow and we can add in our green button. All right. And one thing that we can remove this BTN, I kind of do this because I'm familiar with, but we don't need this BTN. And here we have a box shadow for the button as well. Can you see? Okay, so this is pretty much what do we need for now. Now let's work with the button. So basically we need to have a, we're gonna have one div and another div in here that has this semi-transparent black with an image in front. And then we need this uh, footer. Okay, so let's start splitting here our page. All right, so I'm gonna create a div in here in the left part. We're back here in the left part. And in here, I'm gonna create a div and I'm give a class image for image. Okay. And in here, I'm gonna say hi, h1 for hi so far. Okay, this for image and uh, here it's div class equals to for footer okay so i'm telling the purpose of these things in here and what will be the footer it will be photo by hayley west so photo by here it's an h a h ref and here we're gonna say hayley west hayley west on and another ahref on splash. And here in this ahref, you can put where you got the image, okay? We can put in our case, for example, this hyperlink here where we got the image, okay? So I'm gonna put this ahref in here. This one this one as well actually for Haley here i'm gonna click and it will open up the image where we copied so it will be pretty much the hyperlinks we're gonna use okay so let's see what we have so far if i refresh in here we have this photo by Haley weston and do you see that the green button here it's complaining so we need to change some things here in the hyperlink this will be the hyperlink only for the login so i'm gonna give an class equals to login okay so otherwise it the a here that we're using will affect all of our code so here i'm gonna call login and if i refresh now we have this again okay for these others hrefs that i have in here i'm gonna give an id a class actually class equals to a footer okay class equals to a footer and I'm gonna put in here as well, a class equals to a footer. And in here, I'm gonna change a footer and I'm gonna change the color to white and text decoration none. Actually, in this case, we want a text decoration, right? So let's remove. Here, if I refresh, we have everything here the way that it's supposed to be. And we wanna make this a space and we want to make this not so big. So here I'm going to say class equals to P footer. Okay. And here I'm going to give a dot P footer. And I'm going to put a font size of 10 pixels, 12 pixels, for example. Let's see. Great. I want to do a text align center. Let's see how it looks like. Great. And now I want to put here in the bottom. So now I'm going to use the 
div for footer to make this, okay? So the div for footer. I'm gonna put a display flex and I wanna put a align items flex and, okay? So let's see here. Great, actually, no. I'm gonna use here justify content then. Justify content, okay, didn't work the, the way that we wanted to, and that's okay, we're gonna fix. All right, here, let's create the for image. I wanna use a height of 40 VH, okay? And the other one, I wanna use a height, for the for footer, I wanna use a height of V, 60 VH, so we're gonna use the whole page. All right, let's see here the left. The left, we have all of this. I wanna use a display flex, and I wanna use here a flex direction column, okay, to tell that we wanna work with this. Let's see if we use the developer tools, what is going on. So if we're using here, we have this and we have that. Okay, I'm gonna use here for this for footer, I wanna use a width of not 100%, yeah, 100%, let's see. 100% of what do we have? Okay, what is the left here? 35VH, 35VH, all right. This is the div left for image, and we have the for footer. And why the for footer is not getting everything? So I'm gonna change some things. Here, instead of a paragraph, I'm gonna remove the paragraph. Let's see. Okay, I will, let me put this in here again. And let's work first here with the image. So the high in the for image, I wanna put in the bottom. So here, for image, I wanna do a display flex and flex direction, not flex direction, justify content. Justify content, flex, and let's see. Okay, and what if I do instead of justify, align items. Align items, flex, and it's changing everything. Oh, I'm changing the four footer. <laughs> align items, but it worked the way that it, we wanted to. And here I'm gonna do justify content center. Now I think it will work in here. All right, it's not actually the way that we want, but let's work in here with the for image. Here I wanna do align items. Align items here. Okay, that's good to know. If we take a look in here, we have all of this, all right. And we don't wanna have this H1 anymore. We wanna have a new div in here that will contain div class semi-transparent, okay, inside this div. And inside of this div, we want the image where the source is the dot images and will be the logo of the Odin. And I'm gonna add a alt here, Odin logo, okay? And let's see what we have so far. So here we have this. We don't want that big, so we will resize. Here the height. I'm gonna give 100 pixels, for example, let's see. 150, probably. Okay, yes, 100, it was good. And we wanna write it down here, and we wanna have a H1 saying Odin, for example. Everything in capital, right? And we wanna put this semi-transparent div, everything in a row. So we're gonna do a semi-transparent, and we're gonna have a div, flex, flex direction into a row. And let's check, now they are in a row. We wanna put here the width 100%. Let's see, okay. And we wanna put in the enter, so justify content, center, let's see, great. And now we wanna use the semi-transparent, so how can we do this? We can use a background color and we can change the opacity, do you see? Depending on the opacity, it will be fully transparent if it's near to zero, 
and more opaque if it's near to one, okay? So here, I'm gonna get this property, background color and opacity, and here the background color I'm gonna change to black. Let's see how it looks like. If I refresh in here, it looks pretty good, right? Pretty similar to what do we have, but the image should be a little bit better. Let me put here, align item center to put the text in the center great and i'm gonna change the opacity i think it's too much all right we can play around a little okay and let's take a look at what else we need to change so i fixed one thing that was having an issue so here basically i changed the width 100 percent for the footer so now it's in the center and before it was the opacity was was manipulating the image so i just changed here and i used the rgba that contains the color with the opacity already so it just changed it here i wasn't able to find the the to fix this to find what is this font family okay uh, but it seems to be working we can actually change here the 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 size for example if i do in here h1 font size 30 pixels font family Norse bold let's see how it looks like i think it will only increase the height the size but it won't change for the same font family they are using and it's okay as well like we don't need to to worry about because they didn't give to us the size that they wanted to. One thing that we can fix as well is that here they are basically in the same um, in the same position, right? So we can fix here working with the height of the image. Here we can use like 33. Let's see how it looks like if I refresh. Now it's kind of the same 34. It's in the same alignment as we have in here and we can increase a little bit the height like I mentioned so here if I put 35 let's see it looks a little bit better okay so this is pretty much what we have now what are we gonna do we're going to go to our sublime merge we're gonna stage all the changes here so finish the image part we're gonna commit all the files okay and now do you see here there is a number five we're gonna click and we're gonna push and this will send everything to our github so now once we refresh the github in here we're gonna see all the files with all the changes that we did okay and to finish don't forget to go here to pages and make your project available by clicking here to save okay so basically, I just realized that I didn't um, let it able in my computer to use the font family. So basically in here, as uh, ending, ending up everything, remember to en enable it, okay? You can just click to download in your computer or actually put the correct source in your VS Code, all right? So what did I change? All of the body I changed to this Arial, okay? And here I use for the H1 this Norse Bold, okay? I'm gonna increase here for 50. And if we take a look now, all the income contains the way that it was before, okay? And that's pretty much what we need, all right? So I hope you enjoyed this content. If you enjoyed, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, send here in the comment or uh, check the description below where you can have full support from a programming expert. Okay, I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye. If you would like to have full support from a programming expert via Telegram group and group coaching, check the description below.